if I asked you, as you were a slave 2,000 years ago, if your life was just, you would have answered, no, it is not. And as you were building the Coliseum or any other important achievement of society of the day, the roads, the bridges, the aqueducts, if you could imagine an alternative to slaves building those buildings and bridges and roads, you would have said, no, it is impossible. There is no way that I can even imagine that we could do those things. And it took us thousands of years to realize that alternatives were possible not only to slavery, which we abandoned depending on uh, a, a given nation or in another uh, a few hundred years ago, but even things like child labor, where just a little more than 100 years ago, uh, in England, for example, it would be normal for very, very young children of the age of 10 or 12 to work all day, every day, in uh, coal mines. And even today, um, in too many places of the world, little girls have very little or no access to education. The changes that we have seen in the world are due to technology. It is technology that supports our moral ambitions to create a society that corresponds to our sense of justice and moral right. This kind of co-evolution is what has been happening for humanity for tens and hundreds of thousands of years since we invented fire, when we built the pyramids during the Middle Ages, the Industrial Revolution. What we have been building were hierarchical structures that culminated in the concept of the nation state where today you cannot have, except for Antarctica, any place that doesn't belong physically to a nation state on planet Earth. And we are now building even larger supranational or planetary organizations that summarize this kind of approach on how we think about civilization and what it can express. But at the same time, during the years, we have also been building an infrastructure that today spans the entire planet. Communication infrastructure that could take tens or hundreds of years for an idea to spread from one corner of the planet to another. Communication infrastructure that today is instantaneous, reverberating with good ideas, but also bad ideas all across the world, and we are now in the process of implementing an even finer grained mapping as the Internet of Things with sensors and actuators is trying to understand the planet. It is a kind of fractal exploration of what is the evolutionary fitness that we can understand and apply at any time in order to build resilient solutions to the challenges that we face. And we are discovering that an alternative to the hierarchical solutions is possible thanks to technology. And the networks that we are creating are now in the process of replacing with decentralized solutions what was, in the opinions of those that came before, the only possibility. This is the fundamental thesis of network society, that widespread social and economic change only happens once a solid technological foundation evolves to make it sustainable. That today, indeed, globally distributed and decentralized technologies have emerged 
that achieve superior results with respect to centralized and hierarchical ones. And that as a consequence, necessarily, these unstoppable technologies are going to disrupt and undermine the nation state's supporting pillars. And they will create a new emerging organization, a new socio-economic phase in our civilization that we call network society. Let's look at examples because it is already happening. Solar photovoltaic in energy is completely decentralized. 3D printing in manufacturing, hydroponics, cultivated meat in agriculture, personalized health where knowledge and decision making depends on the individual, peer-to-peer -peer learning where anybody is empowered to acquire knowledge and put it in practice. Blockchain and Bitcoin in finance, peer-to-peer -peer finance, financial technology. Reg tech, regulation technology and security that are based on a new understanding of trust networks and what it means to redesign society around them. It doesn't matter how many mainstream media articles you read that discount the opportunity and the value, for example, of Bitcoin pretending that it only is used by drug dealers and scammers. If you look at what is happening in the context that I have just shown you, you realize that it is an unstoppable change. And then the question becomes, what should you do in order to be able to structure and design your own life in the network society? What kind of new organizations we are going to see that empower and emancipate billions of people who are either today living in a condition that uh, disenfranchises them or who are compliant to the imposed rules of society. However, they live a life that by their own evaluation is not up to the opportunities and the possibilities that they feel inside themselves. And the approaches that we can have are extremely experiential because the barriers to uh, achieve a new kind of dignity that these strong and resilient communities can find are practically non-existent. The fact that this is already happening is not only demonstrated by the technologies that I listed right now, it is also demonstrated by the reaction of existing bureaucracies that resist the change and that are panicking because they don't feel that they can cope with the rate of change, their adaptability is stretched to the limits and beyond their limits of adaptability. It is almost like an immune system where if I am allergic to nuts and I want to eat one or inadvertently I introduce one in my body, my immune system will start to shout, you want to eat a nut? I'd rather kill you. And unfortunately, sometimes it succeeds. Just like the regulators for energy policy did uh, in the state of Hawaii uh, a few years ago, when solar photovoltaic energy became so popular, they decided to stop it. It became prohibited to install solar energy in the state of Hawaii. Or like uh, the federal, uh, the Food and Drug Administration in, in uh, uh, the US that decided that uh, the access to the sacred text of your DNA could not be allowed unless the priesthood of doctors and physicians was there to interpret it for you. A little bit like uh, the uh, classic tale of uh, uh, Catholic and Protestant uh, interpretations of uh, Christian religion clashed uh, amongst each other. Or how the state of New York decided a few years ago that the cost 
of experimenting with Bitcoin and blockchain technologies was unaffordably high. And they imposed costs and regulations that made blockchain innovation leave the state of New York. And they are concretely running the risk, including the United States, to uh, be a laggard in the adoption of these technologies. Whereas for the past century, they were at the center of innovation worldwide. However, if we agree that these changes are unstoppable, the panicky reaction is unjustified, unnecessary. We have to realize that yes, the regulator's job is impossible because they have to know the consequences of exponential technologies, and we know that is impossible to precisely forecast. We can only understand it by iterating and, and trying to find it out. But we have also to realize that contrary to the law of gravitation or electromagnetism, the social contract is not a natural law. We are here to potentially have conversations about how we can break out from the cages of old kind thinking, not only in our enterprises, but also in our communities and in our societies at large, because we can. The barriers are only imaginary. They are not physical. When our ideas come before of their time, like Leonardo who invented the helicopter, you can wait for 500 years, as it would be the case if Leonardo lived to see that his idea was sound. But when a technology is mature and the idea comes at the right time, it is literally unstoppable and you can be the leading physicist of the time as it happened uh, uh, when airplanes were invented and declare that heavier than air flight is impossible, it will still happen. And whether you are in New York, in Hong Kong, or in Madrid, we have to think about what are the dogmatic assumptions of what is possible in society that suddenly are not true anymore. We have to go deep in questioning ourselves, in understanding what are the links that create society. Why do we agree that it is better to form a nation, a civilization, than not being individuals just independent of each other? My expectation is that in this kind of deep conversation, we will have extremely strong allies that are going to help us to be more introspective and more self-aware than we used to be and these are going to be the artificial intelligences that we are enriching society with. This is already happening. We are already asking deep questions about our moral and ethical systems thanks to AIs and robots. And we call them self-driving cars. When you are uh, reading an article that says, oh my God, is the self-driving car going to choose to kill a child instead of an old person or vice versa when it has to make life and death decisions? Is it going to protect the pedestrian or the owner of the car sitting uh, uh, in, inside the car itself? What we are doing is not only creating safer types of, uh, of transportation, we are really questioning the underlying assumptions about what it means to be human in the 21st century. And artificial intelligence, similarly to other technologies, is going to be distributed and decentralized as well. Already today, we are seeing many different approaches around what the right uh, application of AI is and how it should be designed. We also 
are asking ourselves, what role human passion, human emotion, human creativity is going to have in the 21st century? How are we going to maximize the opportunities that we have? Society did not have a full grasp of how we should allow people to experiment. It used to be the case that we would punish those who dared too much. Debtor's prison was the cost of being entrepreneurial until a couple of hundred years ago. Today, society understands much better that in order to find success, we have to protect those who dare to try. And their failure must be something that society cherishes in order to arrive to the new sustainable applications for the future. And this has been the case at the beginning of the 20th century. It is now being multiplied manifold during the age of internet, during the age of cryptocurrencies. When you hear that 99 plus percent of the token projects in blockchain uh, have failed, your reaction should be, oh my god, that's exactly the right rate. Because the barrier to start a blockchain project is nothing, is just imagination and creativity. The time from going to action from idea is trending to zero. We are able to transform our creativity and passion into action faster and faster. And that is why we can learn from the mistakes, from the failures that unavoidably come with that accelerated rate of experimentation. Kevin Kelly, one of the founders of Wired magazine, created the, this chart where he says, the knowledge that we are um, acquiring at an accelerating rate is nothing but the building block of answers to new questions that we are able to ask thanks to that knowledge. And the innovation that we create through that knowledge is supporting the competitiveness of our activities, our organizations, as we invent exciting new solutions. That is why I am optimistic. Certainly, today, too many people are afraid to losing their job to automation, mechanization, and they should, because too many of the jobs of today are inhuman and inhumane. They are not jobs that we should waste our lives doing. If it can be automated, it should be automated. And then, of course, the challenge to society at large is going to be huge. There will be a huge pressure to understand how, during the phase transformation that we are about to witness, we can support the people who are going to be stretched and pushed against and beyond the limits of their adaptability. But the degrees of freedom that we will gain as a consequence are worth the fight and the uncertainty. The numbers of choices that we will have are going to be unbounded, as well as the opportunities that we gain. And the last question that remains for you to ask yourselves as you go home after this event is whether you also want to be a part of this revolution. Thank you very much.